At the dead of night, these traps are hauled up from the bottom of the English Channel. They're filled with spider crabs, destined for tomorrow's local market. But there's also the occasional surprise. The crew release the traps back into the sea, where they'll lie in wait until the Cap Lizard passes through again the next evening. From midnight to midday, the boat set sail from Carteret port off the coast of Normandy to fish in the waters surrounding Jersey, where most of their bounty is caught. But all that changed with the UK's departure from the EU. Brexit means that Captain Grégory Delalande and his crew can no longer enjoy the same access to the island's maritime zone. We only found out at the last minute. Throughout December, we didn't know what was going to happen. They only told us in January that there would be provisional licenses for some boats. 60% of what we fish is in their waters. We work in their waters. We'll be left with just this strip, since they want to take back all this area here. The Brexit trade deal that came into force after the 31st of December effectively revoked the Granville Bay Treaty, an accord that had given France and Jersey mutual access to these waters since 2004. The fallout was immediate. The majority of fishing boats, like the Cap Lizard, spent January on land, until Jersey eventually succumbed to pressure from France and Brussels. The island has granted provisional licenses to 340 boats from Normandy and Brittany until the 30th of April. Beyond that date, many fear they could be left high and dry. Valentin works side by side with his father. For him, their entire way of life is under threat. My great-grandfather was a fisherman, my father's a fisherman, my brother's a fisherman at Carteret. My uncle was too for a time. We're a family of fishermen. For the younger generation who'll take over, it's going to be very difficult. But we won't let them push us around. We can't afford to, or we won't be able to make a living. If they stop us from working in their waters, we'll stop them from landing on our ports. So it will become a never-ending war. And since 70% of their fish is unloaded in France, they won't be able to earn a living either. In the end, it's up to Brussels and them. They'll work it out. The Anglo-Norman island is a British crown dependency, a self-governing entity that's neither part of the UK nor the EU. For France's regional fisheries committee, saint elier's independent status only adds to the administrative headache. The French state used to have a fixed quota of fishing licenses that it could give out to the Normans and Bretons. Now Jersey is saying, no, 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 it's me that's giving them out. But it's an extremely complicated process going from here to Paris, Paris to Brussels, Brussels to London, London to St. Helier, and then back again. All that red tape is excruciating, and regular fishermen and find it absolutely incomprehensible. A list of vessels with a proven track record of fishing in Jersey's waters must be given to saint Helier's authorities before the end of April. This is the crucial first step in obtaining a future license. Bonjour, ça va? Lucille Aumont is from the Normandy Fishing Committee. On the port of Carteret, she's helping local fishermen gather as much information as possible. The data emitted by their GPS is irrefutable proof of a boat's presence in Jersey waters. However, the majority of vessels here don't have GPS because they're small boats. It's harder for them to prove their fishing record, so it's up to us to work with these fishermen to collect as much evidence as possible, like their fishing declarations, inquiries we've made on their behalf, anything we can find. The livelihoods of nearly 750 fishermen in Normandy and 2,000 indirect jobs hang on the line. In this post-Brexit era, the only thing they're sure of is that troubled waters lie ahead.